exotic and mesmerizing, India is a land of complexity and contrast, a vivid tapestry of peoples, languages, and cultures. Among the oldest civilization on Earth, Indian culture has evolved over centuries, absorbing ideas from the Greeks, the Persians, Arabs, Mughals, Portuguese, Dutch, French, and, of course, the British. From the Mughals, northern Indians learned to make rice pilaf in biryani, an elaborate layered dish of rice and meat. The Mughals' refined cooking became the palace cooking and the dominant influence in the north. In the tropical south, the food is hotter and seafood dominates the coastal diet. The treasured fruit of the coconut palm yields coconut milk for curries and coconut water for toddy, a fermented beverage. From north to south, India offers an endless varied feast befitting its varied geography and multicultural heritage. Together we'll uncover the essence of the Indian kitchen as we learn from tandoor masters, market vendors, and specialists in biryani and dosa. In this vast country, with its well-preserved regional cooking and agricultural abundance, we will never lack for extraordinary foods to taste. The preparation of any good Indian meal begins at the market with a trip to the spice stall. There, Indian cooks purchase the cardamom and the clove, nutmeg and mace, mustard seed and cumin seed that perfume the Indian kitchen. Roasting spices and pulverizing them, or popping spices in hot oil, are among the techniques that Indian cooks use to draw out the fragrance and to add depth to their food. At the Cochin Market, in the lush tropical state of Kerala, many of the spices are locally grown. Imagine how fragrant your food would be if you had access to freshly harvested and dried peppercorns and cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and cardamom. The lacy outer covering of the nutmeg, what we know as mace, is almost always sold ground, but not in Kerala. There in the Cochin market, you'll find local mace in its unprocessed form, a rarity and a beauty. You'll also see whole fresh cacao beans, the foundation of chocolate fresh betel nuts, and black salt, a tangy dark salt with a smoky aroma. Cooking teacher and cookbook author Julie Sani knows the secrets of all these spices and how to blend them and how to unlock their perfume. Leading a Culinary Institute of America tour of India, she is our guide at the Cochin Market, where we'll learn about Indian vanilla and about Indian diners' favorite digestive. This pawn making is a very visual thing. And people stand there and, they, and the guy will ask, what do you want? It doesn't matter whether you have the $100, $150 a dinner, Italian, French, or Chinese. You want to end with a pawn if you're an Indian. This is the soul of India, pawn. It doesn't matter which religion, everybody choose a pawn here. So you have this, what is called the uh, display side. So you work on this side, and on this side you put various things. You put lime and another thing called katha, which is katchu, and then you put other spices. Starting with first thing, you put the beetle nut. This is beetle leaf, this is beetle nut. And it is shaved with a special type of knife. You make flakes with it, and you add that, because if you have big nuggets, you're gonna take your cavity out. You put some of that, and then you put the rose petals that you saw in market, conserve. You put that, and you put um, uh, cardamom pods, fennel seeds, clove, and all kinds of flavored fruits, like mango, which has been preserved with, ro with silver line, lined ones. All that is kept. You put that, and then you fold this. And what they would do is, if anybody bought a clove, They'll put a clove here to hold it, and it'll be very puffy normally. And then you take this, and you open your mouth. You don't do that. This is not a teeth work. You just open, ah, and put it on the side. Doug, you know that. I have a photo to prove that. So his, you should have seen his cheek, like somebody really boxed him. Yes, chipmunk, right. You put that, and you, you shut that person for at least 10 minutes. 
Because you're not supposed to chew and swallow. You're, just, you're supposed to just let it sit in your mouth and once in a while you bite into it and then you, you may or may not spit and then you slowly the spices and the, uh, the other ingredients digest. And that's the way natural alka also works, in other words. So this is pan.